get off to get so involved, so involved in our conversations. <laughs> okay, take it away, Sharon. Okay, hold on just a second. All right, I guess I should share my screen then. You want to give her Sharon's screen uh, permission? Oh. Yeah, I think I can. I think I think I've got it set to where she can. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Make sure that uh, I don't have any video clips, but that's okay. All right. And I'm going to try to get this out of the way. Hold on one second. Oh, perfect. Okay. Now I can't see anybody. So, yeah. So changing screens or <laughs> upgrading sometimes isn't the best plan. <laughs> We're all here. Okay. All right. Um. So tonight you guys asked me to do a presentation on the new loop grid. So I guess my first question is, has anyone seen the new loop grid, tried to play with it or uh, work with it? Yeah, I have. Of I have too. <laughs> Yay. I've used it on a couple of websites since it came out. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect. Then, um, then, I think uh, most of us have probably equated this to the um, the L custom skins that mm -hmm. the plugin that most of us often use to kind of take the place of the uh, loop grid. But mm -hmm. now Elementor has released it. Uh, so just for an explanation of what is a loop grid, uh, basically, you know, all of us have been through posts, pages, you know, whatever our list of posts are. And posts can be anything from product listings and uh, news stories or blog posts. So the loop grid lets you customize uh, the appearance of these lists and allowing you to build a design which is tailored to your specifications. So a lot of us, like I said, probably use the plugin L Custom Skins to achieve this. And Elementor has now caught up and is hoping to let us use one less plugin. <laughs> so, um, so the loop grid has actually been added as a widget and it's gonna act a little bit different from most widgets. In most cases, you're gonna drag the widget onto your canvas and then edit, edit uh, your loop in the panel or uh, like my preference is to always use the theme editor and uh, you can also create your loop grid there. So having several ways to create a loop grid is a nice option as well. Oh my God, hold on one minute, I'm so sorry. Crystal, stop it, go to your room. Okay. She's got food and everything and she still wants to annoy me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, all right. So let's uh, move on. Um, so before you get started with the loop grid, you have a setup. So you're going to have to make sure you have both your Flexbox container and your loop set to active. And um, basically, you want to make sure. Oh, no. OK, I hate it. I hate this when it tells me to do this. Okay, wait, I might, I've got too many windows open that might help me. Sorry, let me find one that's gonna work here. All right. So all of us knows where to find the settings, but we're gonna find your Flexbox containers and your uh, loop in the experiments. And this, the flex box is going to be in your ongoing experiments. And you just wanna make sure you have that checked to active. And then, uh, yes, and then here's the loop and just make sure both of these items are set to active, okay? Okay, so let's go over with how to build a loop. And there's actually two ways, I think I've already mentioned it. The first way is through the theme builder and the second way is with the widget. So 
I'm going to, I actually have um, a loop already created so that you can see what we're going to be building. And as you can see, our topic is kitties. <laughs> and then uh, I have a travel topic. I meant to make some more. Um, actually, I think we're going to do that. So I'm going to just do a real quick lubrication. But also, I'm hoping to show you guys how to also show your grids in a category. So specific categories. For instance, I've just narrowed this down to the cats. And then I'm going to show your in travel. Is one method any better than the other? Just out of curiosity. No, it's just going to be your preference. It's, I'm going to show you both methods so you can decide which preference you like. <laughs> so both of them. Um, I was going to give my personal opinion, but <laughs> you need to leave that up to you. But I was going to say, for, with me, one, one, um, one is better than the other. That's the best way that I can explain it based on my preferences. Um, like if you want to, what we're going to do now is go through how to create using the widget, which is basically you're going to set create a new page or work on an existing page. And uh, so we're going to go through that. And then I'm going to show you how to uh, create one using the theme builder. And then you can decide <laughs> about that. Okay. Um, I think I need to stay exactly where I was. So hold on a minute. So I'm going to show you what I have created existing, and we're actually going to start a new page. But I'm just going to show you how. Um, so when you are in this page, and you see the loop builder, you see that it says edit template. So it's going to act like a template. Um, and you have an option to edit it in the page. And as you can see, it's already changed its look and feel. So you have the ability to select each item. And um, to me, when you're working in the grid, it is often easier to work in the navigator when you're trying to select items because I did find that to be a kind of a nuisance, I have to say, unless I was in the theme editor. Um, because as you can see, you can see your live one here, but you're, it only allows you to edit, which you're only going to edit one anyway. So, okay, what happened here? Did it flip on me? Now I'm in a different, okay, here we go. Sorry. Okay, so when you're in the grid, you can, like I said, just add, add your items over. As you can see, once you're in the grid, you see the items that are commonly used on your post and you have all your other items available to you as well. So we're gonna go over this, okay? And we just go save and back so I don't mess anything up. This is what you'll see a lot too, is that gray bar. I'm sure you guys are used to seeing when Elementor won't display something. So I found that uh, I get different types of displays sometimes based on, I don't know whether I was in a page or a post. Well, you won't see it in a post. You're not going to use it in a post, but, um, or the theme editor. So I, I just spoke, or I, excuse me, I had an interview with some elementary folks this morning and uh, I had an opportunity to kind of tell them some issues that I saw, um, but the interview was on something else that they're working on for the future which I can't say, <laughs> but, but um, I think, uh, think what elementary is planning for the future is good. But my big complaint sometimes is when things are published, I want them all to work if they're going to be published. So, okay, got out of the pages. So we're going to add a new page. And I'm just going to... 
I'm just helping myself identify pages. This is just my own technique. So you guys don't have to have to follow this or anything. Uh, let's see. What am I going to name this? Okay, <clears throat> so, so we've got our new page created and what we are going to do is find the loop grid and we're just gonna pull it over to our page. And now, as you see, I'm inside a container which has the loop grid. So now I can just start working. And you see over here where it says, choose a template. So if I had a template, I could actually start typing it in and work with the template that I already have in the theme builder. But we'll show that later since we're actually gonna be working with this. Okay, so now we are actually going to create a template here. So that's, that's our choice. And um, we need to allow it to do its thing. So if you'll notice, it kind of went in and out. So it's kind of what we call template mode now because you notice we have editing handles. And so that's kind of something you need to notice that once you create that template, it's kind of gone into like the theme builder editing mode, but it's still on the actual page that we're working on. All right, so now we just drag our widgets however we want. And I'm going to drag a post title here and I am going to use a featured image. What else do I want? Okay. Now, this was another thing. You notice how it's pulling the whole content in. And I uh, believe there was a little trick to this. And now I'm going to have to remember. <laughs> um, on this content, I think, and see, it's not showing it. Why is it not showing it? You pull, you pull the, the content widget instead of the excerpt. Uh, yes, you are right. And why did I do that? I think I was looking at something. Yeah, that's it. Um, I ran into something with this and, oh, never mind. I was working in something else that there was a special setting. So I'm confusing things <laughs> that I've been working on. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. Okay. And then I want it to actually pull in some post info. Since we're here on the excerpt, can I bring something to um, everybody's attention? Because I've been testing this. Um, the excerpt. Okay, so first of all, let me just back up a bit. I was testing the post widget. And in the post widget, you can pull in the excerpt. The excerpt allows you to uh, control the amount of words you want. Um, and also in WordPress's settings, you can choose whether or not to see the excerpt or the blog post. Um, if you put something in the excerpt field of the blog post, it will override the uh, content. Um, so if you do not put anything in the excerpt, meaning people don't like to write things twice. Uh, so if you do not put anything in the excerpt field, which is optional, it will automatically in the post widget pull um, however many characters you want have set right. and it will come from the content. Right. However, with the post, uh, excuse me, with the uh, loop grid 
when you pull in the excerpt, um, you don't have that option to get the content if you leave the excerpt blank. It will not pull any content in whatsoever, if that hmm. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So there is uh, a, I don't want to call a flaw or an oversight with the uh, post excerpt in the loop grid. Yes, there's actually a lot of flaws. <laughs> I mean, okay. no, I, I should just... say a lot, but <laughs> there's a couple of flaws that I noticed. One of them, hopefully it won't do it this time when I was building it, it just wouldn't work. But as you see, there is a read more button. So obviously when we build our uh, grids we and we're using the excerpt, you know, you know, we obviously want to send people to read more. So there is a read more button that we can pull in. And um, like I changed my label to read continue reading. And as you see, it doesn't display here, but I've got everything I want. And so the next thing to do is to just format things the way that you want to see them. Sorry, let me get the chat off my screen. And um, uh, yes, opportunities for improvement. So now we just need a format. And um, not to say that this is the size, but obviously if I want to adjust the size, I would. In fact, I normally set the width of these to 400 pixels. Um, and... Let me see. It should be H threes. Okay. So you just need to format whatever you want to format. Like I want these to be. And then once you're done with everything, your you style your elements and make everything the way that you want it to fit your design. And you click your, your you know, obviously you want to update, but also save and back, right? Crystal. Okay. Yeah. Do you see this? This is what I'm talking about with that read more button. So I could not find, or at least I wasn't interested in finding a way to fix this. <laughs> so I found my own solution. Um, and of course, reported this to the elementary people when I was talking to them this morning. So I get some unnecessary options here. Um, and then once you're in this mode, though, what you do is now that we have it kind of named its own template. So this is why I prefer to do the theme builder because I like to give it a name when I'm working with it. But um, you can set up your columns, how many columns you want to show and how many items per page. And once you have your items per page set, then you can set your pagination. So, so you're setting up a lot of um, information here once you have everything set up in your loop grid. Okay, so I'm going to go back into the loop grid and get rid of the read more button. Oh, wait, let me see. I'm glad they do that. So this is exactly what I was saying. So what I did is I just created my own continue reading button. Uh, and sometimes I like to put a little icon in there. Okay. Yeah. Now, 
so let me update this. Do save and back. And I should be able to get rid of this continue reading now. There we go. Now, right. I, sorry. I said, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Now, also, um, I did, as you notice on the page that I showed you, I I added a, some, a few more um, styling to the whole entire grid, to the whole grid itself, each grid, I'm sorry. I can't even talk now. Um, so as you see, these are butting up against each other. So this is why another reason why I like working in the theme builder because I can see everything and work with it all at once. And also, let's see. Um, let me make sure it should put my buttons on equal height and it's not doing that now. Let's see. So... Oh, also you can set the query. And I think all of us are familiar with this. So I'm not going to try to explain it too much, but you're familiar with how to include and exclude. I usually order my, I guess I do order by date, but I do ascending dates. Oh, I'm so cute. <laughs> and my buttons aren't acting the way that I want them to. So. Now, I had this showing up six, so there isn't going to be any pagination until I add some more uh, more posts. So I think I'm going to do that, go in and get us some additional posts so that later on we can show some pagination because we are going to work with that later. Now, I'm going to just exit this and go over to the theme builder to show you kind of the difference that we can work with. So in your theme builder, you'll notice now that you have a loop item mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is the one that we just built. So it automatically gets added to your theme builder. So you can actually come in here and update whatever you worked on in here and change the title. <laughs> So now see the difference. Now I'm just working with one, although we were working with one in the other container, but now I can see the whole container. So, so now it's actually easier for me, like if I want to add a couple of, add a border to this, I can actually see it. And uh, what do I want? Two border or two, do I want to two in color? This color. Okay. Actually, hold on. I meant to do that on hover. Reset this. Change that. And then, and then do this on hover. I just always have my own personal settings for this. So obviously you can change them how you want. So now you see on hover, I have a border around it and, and I get a different hover, okay? I mm -hmm. uh, don't need a shape divider. So the other thing too, what I might do, because remember everything was butted up to each other. Um, I, there's a setting obviously on the page that I can do to add a gap in between, but I'm also going to come in here and add some padding into
I think I did this backwards, but that's okay. I think I want 16, yeah. Well, I should have just put 16 all around instead of, and then I guess I want to, there we go. So see how I can clean it up just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm going to exit that and then create one from scratch, although it's just the same technique. I mean, there's really nothing different. But when you add a new, when you're adding a new loop item, you'll actually see this in the display menu now, and you can actually choose the source. So it's only showing posts right now, but if I had a custom post type or if I had WooCommerce installed on here, my products would be in here, and it would also show any custom post types that I have in here as well. So now we get to name our template. And I just screwed up my little pattern there. And now see how it just gives you the window just for a loop. And so it's not giving you the whole option of a big container and everything. It's just limiting you to that loop. And you can still come over to your page settings and set, you know, the preview like 400, but see that really didn't change that loop that much. And that's just my average. I mean, obviously if you want these bigger or smaller, like I think some people go to 350, just depends on what you want displayed on your page. I usually, depending on what type of site I'm working on and a style I'm trying to, trying to achieve, I usually do the two posts wide because I feel like they're easier to read instead of trying to squish everything in into the three posts. It also depends on how wide your uh, website screen is to work with as well. So I'm gonna stick back to my 400 here. And uh, sorry, don't you like working instead of pixels with uh, percentages? I love percentages, and everything I work with in percentages. And and that's your preference too. And and let me just say, <laughs> Oscar, that the only reason why I stick to pixels during demonstration is because I don't like to confuse people. <laughs> oh, okay. So so I I kind of retrain myself. Because I, I do, I work with percentages or rims. Um, that's my preference. But I try not to confuse people on how to figure out percentages because there's an art to doing that. So that's why I'm sticking to pixels when I do demos. <laughs> um, okay. And then again, so we've already set up, I, like I said, I only have posts here. So we're not going to get anything special, but you can set that into your page settings. And I'm, I may be assuming everybody knows what page settings are, but you can always find your page settings using the little icon gear icon over on the bottom left there. And uh, let's see. So now, again, you just start pulling your post information over. And let's see, I probably want to do, let's do this a little bit different. Let's put the featured image on top. And actually, let me pull, let me pull. Let me pull something else. So because we've already got tranquility showing. Little, little kitty. So your categories and tags are really important if you have those set up, which I do recommend any blog posting you're doing, you always need to make sure you have your categories and tags 
or well, you don't really need tags, but definitely categories. But tags are just an additional function for feature for you to use to help um, uh, categorize things. All right, what else do I want? Featured image, post content, post excerpt, and then just need a button now. And I am going to do the button because I know the other, the read more doesn't work. So, <laughs> and notice that I use a dynamic tag on the button so that it goes to the article itself. Um, And as you can see, it's no it's no different than what we did before. It's just a different uh, you know page. You're not inside a page. You're um, you know you're styling everything that you have. Let's do one on this one. And Let's do that. And then that too. Um, now let's use our exit color. With that so big. Mm, and that's, let me think, I think that's all that I want. Oh, no, let's do one more thing. Okay, take that off. All right. We we'll publish that, and now um, hold on. Let me do one more thing. Okay, so now putting this in a page is just a matter of finding the template, and really, that's all there is. Now. Obviously, there's going to be a difference when you have products, putting them into a product page, whether than um, a post, you know, blog post page. So, um, and I'm going to create, uh, I forgot to check to see if I have a blog page, but I don't think I do. So let's just see. Hopefully I don't. Yep, good. Okay, now I'm gonna do, let's see. Drag a container in there and I'm going to uh, not what I want it. Okay, let me, I'm going to leave this off until I can find, until I can go back and fix this. And I don't want that either. So let me just delete this. So I'm going to fix that later and then we'll come back and add it in. What am I looking for now? A loop. Okay, so here, since we've created our template in the theme builder, we are just going to look for that. And that's the reason why I use these things called loop, because now I can just 
ignore everything except for what I'm looking for. And I think this was the template that I used. And we're gonna set the columns to two. And notice how I already have grid spacing and everything now that I kind of changed, used the thing builder. Um, I'm gonna change this to four so that we can actually see, see if our equal height will work now. Okay, there's our query. And let's add some pagination. And you have a lot of options on paginations. And I'm going to, and you can set a page limit on this. Let's say there's, you know, I'm going to leave it to five. If I have like that many posts, then I'm going to do that. And let's see here. Oh, come on. Um, actually, thirty. Okay. You know why it's not centering that? So you see how you're getting different, so should be centering that. I don't know why, again. Well, I think it's uh, it's probably not centering because it's it's long enough that it's breaking to the second line. Yeah, but it still should center it. I don't know why it's not centering it. But uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. So besides just, you know, formatting the page, that's all you have left to do here, but you can pretty much see, you know, as, as we do in Elementor, how things are going to look. So um, if we go and preview our page, so good. Or it looks like our buttons are lining up now. There we go. Nope, they are not. So that's so weird. How oh, why did it? You see my loop grid page. Work there, work there, then it worked there. So my pre-advanced work works fine, but <laughs> my current work doesn't do what I wanted to do. <laughs> Let's see, it's did that. Well, now they seem like they're working. Why did it why? Am I oh, because I'm on the wrong page. Okay. Wait, this is my new one. Well, now it looks like it's working. Okay, I'm just seeing things, I guess. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it as far as how to create one. Any questions before I move on? Mm. So, I mean, it's really straightforward. And as um, I don't know who was, who was uh, talking about some things that didn't work before, like the excerpt, who was talking about that? It was a lady, I don't remember which one. Yeah, I, I kind of recognize the voice, but I don't want to guess without. <laughs> it was Catherine, I think it's Catherine. Catherine. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought, it was Catherine, so. What now? Yes, Catherine, there you are. So, um, you know, like Catherine's saying, you know, some things don't work. And that's one, I just want to tell you guys, I did mention this to the people I talked to this morning, because that's a big pet peeve of mine is when elementary, or it doesn't even have to be elementary, anybody that publishes a plugin or, you know, page builder or whatever, if they're going to publish something, their testers need to make sure everything works. And, um, you know, that's, that's just one of the things that I find you know, from working with not just Elementor, but any plugin uh, that we use. And I will show you guys when I, or what I try to do during my demos is just really limit, um, you know, what, what we're working with so that we know we're just working with Elementor and not really anything else. The only thing 
I have installed on here that we haven't used is Fluent Forms. And the only reason why it's on here is because this is a sample site for me and I was testing something out for Fluent Forms. Uh, so basically all the, all the um, widgets should you know, perform mm -hmm. as Elementor expects them to perform. So I don't know sometimes. <laughs> All right. Well, it, it's not um, considered, I mean, it's still an experiment, right? It's not part of the. That is true. You are core. still in experimental mode. So yeah. yes, you do have to take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> right. And, and I know that containers, containers have been an experiment since the, as yes. an example. Yeah, but containers... what, back in March, Brian, because we did yeah, a March of last year. On, um, containers back in May, and it's still an experiment, although it appears to be stable. stable. Yeah, stable. And I've started using it. I, ju I just started using building on websites with containers a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it seems to be working properly, mm -hmm. although there might be some little, you know, you run across some obscure little instance um, or something weird, what do they call it, an edge case. I mm -hmm. haven't run into that yet, but um, so, but I have used the loop builder um, and it, I didn't have any issues, although whatever, well, I don't remember exactly which site it was. I work on a lot. It, um, I didn't run into any issues, but it doesn't mean there aren't issues that, that are out there. So, right. Just bear in, I guess what we're point B is if it's in experiments, bear in mind it's still an experiment. So, right. And, uh, yeah. And containers, I know they're still listed in the experiments, but as you said, you know, they, they have actually published and they're supposed to be live now and so I don't know why they're still being listed in the experiments <laughs> just so, and it might be because as they are uh like the loops doing things like loops and things that that um depend on the container you know because right. so that might be why they're they're still keeping it there right 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 that makes sense so um, okay, let's see. I need to, what I want to do is go over to my menus and I, get rid, get rid of this one. If this goes on the main menu and I don't know, the page in there. So let's call that our custom loop. I don't recall, um, Sharon, does the loop builder have ability to have filterable tabs? So it does not right now. That's why you see me building my own menu. Right, right. <laughs> and um there's a process that I go through when I build this. So as you, as you can see, it takes a category and, um, uh, and then this one, I just use the blog page as it. So, right. so you have to really know what you're working with. In fact, that was the other thing I wanted to show you guys, because if you're going to do the filter, like I'm setting up here, you also need to set up a, a category page so that let me just show you guys what I did here. Well, basically it's the same thing, but uh, you can see that I've added the menu in here and the menu is using the post menu that I created. And you see it's got custom loop in there now. And then um, what you what you do is 
when you're trying to do specifically a category, this is when you use a query. And I had that kind of, I forget where that is. In my, it's actually next, building a query. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, if you want specific things to be shown, you are going to use your query and um, you're going to either include or exclude you know, what you want to be shown here. And if you want to reuse this, I'm not sure if you guys are used to reusing, I call them components. Um, all you do is just give it a query ID. And that way, whatever you have set up in this particular query, like for instance, if it was um, uh, you know, products or whatever, you know, all your settings would be saved and then you would just pull up this query ID. Let's just say that I'm going to call this uh, you, you know, cats or something. And now uh, if I was just trying to get, you know, all the cats, then I could save, save this by just putting in a term here and putting in my cats category. And then the next time I wanted to use this, I would just pull this up. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. so it's like a very um, def more specifically defined query. Yes. As opposed to just posts or products or custom post types. That's right. Okay, I, I, that's cool. I, I didn't learn something new every day <laughs> right yeah and I think this is often overlooked a lot no one knows how to use this and it's kind of like you know when you are on a page and you want to create a global widget it's kind of the same thing instead of you're just using an id to recall it got it so yes it's very cool very cool but I'm going to clear all this out because I don't want to mess this up let me um Let me see. I wonder if I can just exit this without saving it. Oh uh, yeah, leaf, 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 leaf. <laughs> okay, let's see. Back to the theme builder. And in case you guys should know, whenever you go to the archive, this is where you find. Um, you know, if we want to just make an archive of that, um, that's where you go to create anything for. Your post categories, if you're doing um, like WooCommerce has the same thing, but you're going to see it specifically for WooCommerce. And the only reason why I'm not pulling up WooCommerce, because it's really no different than what we're doing here. You're just in WooCommerce, you get a couple of more items here. You get a, um, a shop archive and you get products, product archives, and also sing, you see a single and um, product page. So there's only a slight difference in working with it. And basically, it's the same thing. You're creating the loop grid. Everything's the same. It's just working with products or some specific post type. Okay, let me just check my notes to make sure um, I'm not boring you all. <laughs> let's see. Um, yep, I did that. I built a query. Let's see. Um, so, yeah, we've covered everything. You guys don't have any questions? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Uh, how would you want that new loop grid change the number of characters you'd have in the post excerpt? Okay, now what she was telling you, um, uh, the ability to do that with the loop grid is not there. Okay, let me actually go back. Well, I should have done that. Let me go back to my templates and show you. So when you pull in the post excerpt in the loop grid, it does not have any settings. You see this? And what what is, does the ranch icon do on the, um, the excerpt little thing? Oh, um, 
Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. There you go. I don't know why I said it doesn't work. I think I did try this. That might be why I'm saying that. <laughs> so, so let's say I want to change this to, yep. So I changed it to 25 characters. So I think this is character-based or word-based. So actually, let Looks me. like look. word. Yeah. I was going to say, let me look that up real quick. But if word. You, is okay so this is based on words so if i want 50 words in here well not 501 but <laughs> let's just do 50 words and i also let me see what i did oh hold on i'm going to save this and i'm going to go over to the post i think this is where there was a little trick Yes. Okay. So working with uh, Gutenberg is not always easy to figure out because if you're in Gutenberg, you know that you have, you have these items here. And if you do a search, there is no S cert in here. Well, now there is, I think that's because why is there? One? <laughs> Everything's proving me wrong here, but uh, I learned to, that there is one over here on the side and you actually have to show that, you know, now I've got to remember how to do that. Um, is it under preferences, blocks, the panels? Yeah. So under your preferences, there's an option to check the excerpt to show over here in your panel. So, and it's odd that it's coming up in here now because I could have sworn I did a search for that and it didn't show up. <laughs> it's showing up now. That is just so odd. <laughs> well, Gutenberg has been in experiment for five how years. <laughs> Let's fix it. How long now? <laughs> and they keep, they keep updating it, right? Yeah. I, that might have just happened overnight, I swear, because when I was setting this up, I, I searched, literally searched for this. I'm like, where's the freaking excerpt? <laughs> okay, so um, so now there's an excerpt you can actually put in, but here, here it is over here in the side panel. <laughs> so that's where you get your excerpt from. Either you're using it here or I guess now you can actually add it if you have it in Gutenberg. Uh, so that was something I had to search for too, because I do not use Gutenberg. I actually, I, I cheat. There's a plugin that I use. I didn't put it in here, but it's called disable Gutenberg. <laughs> so, so, and I know there's a classic editor button, but if you use the disable Gut Gutenberg, you don't have to use the classic editor, um, plugin. Um, it will take you back to everything that you need, but it's a kind of like an updated version. So um, when you do the, because I use, I don't like Gutenberg either, and I'll use um, the classic editor, classic editor. but yeah. when you use the disable Gutenberg, what do you get? Do you just get the classic editor? Yeah, it'll go back to the classic editor, but if you look at um, disable Gutenberg. Let me see. Here it is. Okay. So if you look at this, it'll it'll tell you that um, you know it replaces it with the classic editor, mm -hmm. and you can disable Gutenberg completely. So that's why I use this because if you just install classic editor, you're also installing it on top of Gutenberg. Didn't know so, that. Okay. So you want to actually disable Gutenberg so that it's loading again less items on your web page. So that's why I found this one to be more effective because yes. I, I'm yes. I'm all about streamlining. Absolutely. Yep. Good. Good takeaway, people. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I like to use. So um, I when I'm doing demos, I try to use the product. <laughs> Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Why would you want to disable Gutenberg instead of just not using it? Well, if you're doing blog posts, you have to use it. I mean, there, there's no way around it. If you're doing blog posts, you have to use the posts, right? Mm, 
unless I use custom post types. Yes, right. Unless you use custom post types and create you, your own. But if again, if if the object is a blog post, I mean, why would you create a custom post type for your blog post? I mean, okay. so so and again, if you're creating your own custom post type and not using post at all, then I would disable the post because there is a plugin for that. In case you guys didn't know, because I do have some e-commerce sites. They don't blog at all. And so rather than keep something on there that also has, um, I guess, is accessible to hackers, if you're not using it, you disable it, right? So that's another area that you have to watch out for. So if you have sites that you're not building a blog post on, disable it, disable the post. Okay. And there's a plugin for that. <laughs> I think it's called disabled post, but let me look at, let me just make sure that's right. Uh, yeah, we'll disable blog right here. I think that's it. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not using a blog, just disable it. And I use also, if you are doing a blog, but you don't take comments, again, disable the comments. Um, so it's based on what you're building, what's being used, and you know how to protect your site. All of these, all of these little items help protect your site. So why would, you, why would you want to disable comments with a plugin if you can do it in your WordPress settings? Uh, oh, um, again. Some, how do I answer that one? Some hackers find a way. If you don't have your comments disabled, they're really still active, even though you have that setting in um, WordPress. And believe me, Oscar, I have seen this come in. I my One of my e-commerce sites, I thought I had everything you know taken care of and I just used the setting. Um, and... I was still getting comments coming in on that site and I'm like, where are these coming from? And so, you know, I've, I've experienced the same thing now that you mention it because mm -hmm. I disable comments. M many of the, I do a lot of work for one particular marketing agency and all the websites they build, they, they don't have comments. Mm -hmm. So I've disabled comments, but I have seen comments come in um even on pages yeah and i don't know if you've experienced it but a lot of times what i get is the russian the russian hackers so they find a way i don't know how they're doing it but they find a way okay but uh, using, using that plugin will prevent them from being able to get to it at all because yeah. you're disabling it completely yeah. off of the site itself yeah so if you think about WordPress, so, okay, and I'm not a hacker, so I don't speak the hacker language. I don't know anything about it, but I do read a lot. <laughs> but if you think about how WordPress is built, and obviously the hackers are, are learning that, right? They're learning about where things are, how they're being built, what, you know, what the common denominators are. We have pages, we have posts, we have, um, you know, um, themes. So knowing how something is built and if something, so posts have comments. So those things are associated and they also have their own table. So if we aren't, you know, disabling those, that means we're just, once we disable them, we're disabling that table in our database as well. So nothing can be written to it. So if you're not disabling it, you're still leaving that table open to be written to. And that's what the hackers are looking for. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and what it really sounds like is you need to really understand the functionality of what's happening in the background, because even though it says, Oscar, am I right that it says disabled? Because I've disabled them on all the websites I've built as well. But if I'm not using that plugin and it still has the table still there, the table can still be written to. But right. the plugin itself prevents any mm -hmm. access to it. So even though WordPress is using the term, I think, uh, what does it say? Allow comments. Allow comments. 
Yeah, so they're using the phrase allow, and we're thinking it's not, you know, allowing and disabled is two different things. Mm -hmm. Yep. So even if I uncheck all of this to prevent it, that still leaves me open because that table is still in my WordPress build. That's, I did not, that's a good thing. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> Oscar's like, oh. No, 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 I'm learning, I'm learning because <laughs> I, I used to do it. I mean, I just disable, disable comments. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I don't need them, and if I'm gonna allow comments, the mm -hmm. author must be logged in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that obviously is a preference. You know, they have to be logged in. I mean, I have, um, I'm going to turn my screen off so I can actually see you guys now. But uh, I have, uh, I'm sorry, let me find my button here. I have, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my thought. I have, oh, I have my clients doing their e-commerce stores being private now because of the fact that people can come in and just register and they're not buying. So a lot of my clients want their store to be protected and they have to be logged in before they can even shop now. So there's, and I, I can understand their point of view because, you know, they were so used to getting a bunch of crap from these hackers. And, um, you know, I'm starting to learn how the hackers are getting through and just from the from that experience of okay, I turned this off. Why am I getting this? You know, so it's just it's just from working with it and knowing okay, they got in, so I got to prevent that now. On those sites that you're talking about, where they have to be logged in, is there any kind of like approval process? Like, or can anybody just register? <clears throat> So, um, so it depends on your client. So yes and no. Like I have, I have one client, they use their store is completely private until someone registers. Now, what I did is I set up a um, registration form that actually has, um, uh, so we capture specific information from the user. So they have to be an actual user, obviously. And there's a, uh, what's, uh, I use reCAPTCHA for this, but and but I'm using Gravity Forms for that for for the registration form because um, unlike Elementor, Elementor doesn't have the capability that Gravity Forms does. And Gravity right. Forms has like a ranking system using also with the Google reCAPTCHA. And if they don't, if reCAPTCHA doesn't give them a specific ranking, they are sent to the spam. Okay. Now, with that, once that individual is in spam and then they complain, so now you know they're a real individual and you can go and activate them. So it doesn't like just completely deletes them. It just puts them in a spam area saying, okay, you didn't meet the requirements and um, we can go and pull them out if they, if they are a real user. But we have caught a lot that aren't real users, <laughs> so... And then I have another client where they just want people to log in before they even check out. So they, it's not as, um, they, they can actually shop, see everything in the shop. And, um, but once they get to check out, they have to be a logged in user to actually check out. Um, so the other one is called a private store. They can't even see the shop button until they're logged in in an actual user. Right, right. Well, I built a site year and a, last year into the previous year that the people, it's a program for young young girls, um, uh, faith-based thing, and, and they're different grades and, and different grades of, you know, like high school, you know, of se juniors, seniors, sophomores, and each one um, has a they see a different website. It's the same website, but it's it's um, show hide based on user type. Mm -hmm. But if they go through this long registration page, um, and then they um, sign up, and they're added to the users, but they're added as a subscriber. 
So a subscriber, as far as the user is concerned, it's the same experience of just being somebody who walks in off the street. Yes. And then the staff go in and change them to whatever category they're supposed to be. Although being a subscriber does give you more, as I understand it, more access or the ability to get into the back end than if you were just from the outside. So sometimes being a su subscriber can be a, a little back door to get into stuff, if I understand it right. Um, well, it, it can, uh, but also if they're, if they're using a membership base to set that subscriber, it is a little bit more secure. But if they're okay. just using the WordPress role, as a subscriber, then yeah, it's not as secure. You want to make sure you're using some type of membership um, to create that security that they have access to specific areas. Right. So I haven't heard from Sherry. I think Sherry's on and who we have, Mark Lees. We're, you guys hiding tonight? <laughs> That's gee. <laughs> I'm just absorbing all the knowledge as usual. There. Uh, I did miss a couple of things. Are is there going to be a recording of this one now that we're on a new platform? Because yeah, it was hit and miss on the other one that we switched to. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll post um, the we'll send out an email pr probably over the weekend. Um, sometimes if depending on how Fridays go, um, I can get it all packaged up and put up on uh, YouTube the next day, but more than likely be the weekend. When it's posted, um, I'll send it out an email to all the people who RSVP'd with the link. Um, and you'll also see on that, that YouTube channel, um, some record recordings of previous meet our meetups meetups too so um that'd be great i'm redoing one of my websites right now and i want to incorporate a bunch of the new stuff so thank you very much oh you're oh, welcome so uh, uh carrie before before you got um well i don't know if you want to stop the recording or not but i just have one announcement if i can make it <laughs> no go right ahead if I, but I don't know if any of you guys are interested in WooCommerce, but I'm, I'm going to be offering a WooCommerce workshop. It's a hands-on live workshop, and I'm going to have six sessions of that. It's going to be starting in February, and um, I have everything almost ready to go, but if you're interested, just shoot me an email at workshop at Tech Mouse Club. I'll put the link in here. Um, Shoot me an email. Tell me you're interested. Um, TechMouseClub.com. And this is a beginner level. So it will take you for everything from setting up WooCommerce to setting up your products and everything, you know, in between. <laughs> and I imagine it's elementary based. It will be uh, elementary based. Yep. Good. Good. In fact, uh, all all of the students that are registered will get a uh, a uh, web server uh, built, you know, with WordPress and Elementor license and uh, WooCommerce set up. So. Cool. So it's all. So where are you putting the the the? You say they're going to get a web server. Where are you doing it on Cloudways or? So actually, I'm not sure if y'all have heard of it, but so I'm using DigitalOcean plus SpinUp WP. Not sure if you've heard of SpinUp WP. No. So basically, I've created my own virtual private server using DigitalOcean, and I can use SpinUp WP to spin up the websites that I'm creating. And um I can actually, you know, and I'm just finding this so fascinating. Not that I want to be a web host or anything, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it it is almost uh, more affordable. And obviously, since I'm doing the web shop and carrying that load, uh, but it, I'm finding it's also almost really better than some of the platforms that I've used for web hosting before. 
So um, I'm really excited about it using that. Are you able to do like on-demand backups and that kind uh -huh. of thing? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's, you know, I'm learning a lot. Like I said, I don't want to be a web host, but I found this to be useful. You know, a lot of people that run, um, of course, that, that's the other thing that's different about my course. My course is live. It's not a recorded YouTube um, course. So, you know, I'll be there helping people as they have questions and stuff. But also what I was going to say is that, that um, I find it beneficial, you know, a lot of times when you're having a live workshop, um, people, if they're setting up their own, you know, website or whatever, using their own web product, it's not always going to be 100% you know, what you actually need to work with. So people are going to find the cheapest route to use. Sure. So the reason why I went into that much trouble into finding something that I could use in the workshop that I knew everybody was going to have the same setup and the same access to a good product to use. And I just, just like I said, this is kind of, I'm running a little late and that's the main reason why I'm running late is trying to figure out how to set all that up and get it available for everybody to use. So, yeah, because no, I really wanted to start out. this in January, <laughs> and here it is almost February. So, um, yeah, I so yeah, on February, the start date is February 21st, so that's what I'm shooting for. <laughs> Hopefully, I can meet that date this time. Well, I hope that works out and you get a lot of business from that. So, I do too. I, I, you know, I know that I have some, a lot of people interested in, in my group. And so I, you know, I'm hoping the other groups don't mind that I advertise, <laughs> you know, help some people out. <laughs> no, I know WooCommerce is, is a, an enigma for some people, you know, it, it's, yeah. and it's certainly a handful. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. Is, um, and if you can simplify it, that's, oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm hoping most people, you know, like I said, it is a beginner level. And I know some people are, you know, more in advanced level. And I do plan on moving forward to, you know, intermediate and advanced. But my 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 vision of advanced is more into doing um, web hooks and coding and stuff. So, you know, there's a way to, a, a while before I can get people to that level. So I really thought I should start with the beginners. Absolutely. Sure. So that's all I have. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. I'm I'm yeah. glad you guys asked me to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, well, let's shameless plug for the elementary central people. Um, mm -hmm. We are meeting on is it February 6th, Monday, February 6th, and we're going to be covering um, Elementor and CSS. <laughs> mm, okay. Cool. That, um, that'd be interesting, actually, to, to see use that what right approach now. you take. <laughs> Who was that, Sherry? I could use that right now. Like, oh. <laughs> my, my son's brewery, they're... Um, menu comes from an outside service and it's very bland and i'm trying to figure out how to tweak it with css to make it a little more on brand and oh there you go yeah, yeah. it's it's interesting yeah uh, i'm hoping to yeah i'm always I, I, I hate to even say this but i'm always strapped for time but i'm hoping that i give you know i always have in my head what i want to do and it's, so far i'm kind of like 50 percent through my presentation <laughs> work up but um i'm hoping that i get everything out of my head and into the presentation <laughs> so. speaking of css um i guess we're pretty well getting close to the end here but i ran across something that you know i've been i have been i haven't i've only been using wordpress for about 10 years although i have been building word uh, websites for 28 years i guess <laughs> Um, I ran across something the other day called CSS Clamp. Are y'all familiar with that? And it, and I haven't played with it too much, but it, it looks to be the super cool thing. It's it allows for fluid, fluid typography, fluid images, 
that um you know how instead of going from breakpoint to breakpoint you can set it it'll it'll allow your text depend your screen gets bigger small the text gets bigger and smaller fluidly it's fluid it's, yeah it's, I'll it's be the teaching coolest that. thing i'll be teaching that too <laughs> yeah I, and do you well, know do you know that in the latest release uh elementary 3.10 that we're able to use the clamp in yep. yeah because of the um <laughs> in the units you have the write your own yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i was shocked i was like oh my god they're taking away my presentation <laughs> but no, if y'all not familiar with it look it up it's it's very cool i and i'd never heard of it it's a it's considered a, a csf math function like yeah. calc you know mm -hmm. um and I was familiar with that, but I'd never heard of clam. I don't know if that's new or if it's always been around or. No, it is. It is a new function. Well, not so new, but it 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 didn't come out with CSS3. So, yes, it is a new function. And the fact that it's new to those of us who've been using CSS3 for a while. And um, even though CSS4 has never been published, <laughs> um, you know, it has come on the scene um, relatively new uh do you use um i'm trying to remember the website that i use so before this came out i was putting my uh, fluid typography into my custom css code right um and identifying how to use it with the elementor kit that was kind of where my big css presentation was going to go my kickoff to my presentation yeah. <laughs> now elementor just ruined it for me <laughs> but um but i'm still going to use that to show them how i actually got all of that and so there were two websites that i use let me see if i can pull them up and i can tell you what they are um that i use to arrive to help it kind of helps so it's called type scale so there's a type scale website that allows you to put that in and if y'all want me to share, I can do that real quick. Sure, go right ahead. Let's see, there's also um, a fella on YouTube who's got a YouTube channel. I can't remember his name, but his I think his channel and his business is called Web Squadron. Oh yeah, um, or, uh, what's his name? Um, yeah, he he does that. He, he's yeah. built a, a Excel spreadsheet. Oh yeah, my friend did that too. Um, and and, and, I asked her, and he's got it embedded on his site so you can go in and get your see it'll generate the css for you yeah well i'm going to show you a better way <laughs> you don't need an excel spreadsheet <laughs> so there's two sites that i use to help um yeah brian thanks for doing that so um there's two sites that i use one is called type scale and the nice thing about it you know again mm -hmm. Oscar, if you use percentages, it kind of tells you here what your percentage is. So um, the key is is figuring out, you know, a lot of people are used to pixels. And Oscar, this is kind of why I, try, I train myself to go back to pixels to help people a lot. <laughs> so I use um, percentages and rem. Huh? What's that? I use percentages and rems. Never yeah. Rem. yeah. Yeah, which is always a lot better for you to use. So with type scale, and again, this is all pre-elementor stuff. So now, but you're still going to need to understand it, even use if you use elementor to do this. So like you, you put in your base size. Right now, 16 pixels is the base size of 100% and 1M, right? I prefer to use 18 pixels as, as my base size. But the nice thing too is that you can use um, how you want your page to look. And I end up always using the perfect fourth. And so now I can actually, and you can actually, if you're using Google fonts, you can pick whatever font you like to use. Uh, let me think. I, I mean, I use Poppins, but I'm going to pull up something else that I like. And fortunately, I can't type it in. So let's see here. Yeah. Is it Nakoto? I think I forget what Nakora. There it is. So I like using this one too. And you can, uh, I'm going to leave that at 400. So you see how it's changing that. So it pretty much sets everything 
all the way from your from your pixel size all the way up and down. Yeah. So you have a button here that says grab the CSS. So you can notice how it's it's setting everything for you in your H1, your header tags for you. Right. And it sets your your paragraph and your font family and everything. So I know that's that can be confusing using Elementor and using a style sheet, but I was I have a few tricks to show people how they can work this into their style sheet. So I'm not going to tell you my whole presentation. Okay. But then you can go into the font size clamp. There's a clamp generator here, and you mm -hmm. can change this to you know what you use. And again, if you're comfortable with pixels, so let's say my minimum viewport width, I'm using what is, what is it 320? I think it's the smallest. Yeah. And um, and let's the. 1440 is usually the biggest um, viewport. So again, your min ma your minimum font size, if you want to change that, and then your maximum font size, say like that, we work with that. So you can actually generate your clamp configuration. And so what I do is I create a copy of all of my H1s. And then I, let me see if I can... I have this up here. I have this already, so let me just find it. Um, uh, my code snippets, I should just go there. Let me see, sorry. Where's my typography? So I'm wearing contacts. So it's like, it's a little different for me than wearing my glasses. <laughs> yeah. I've got this already. Here it is it's my typography stuff. So whatever I'm using, oh, can I, am I sharing? Can y'all see this at all? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I don't see the green box. So I didn't know if I was sharing or not. <laughs> so as you can see, what I do is I take it and take the code and then I just pull out the clamp and put it into each one of my, my header tags. And then um, I say that if I'm going to be, you know, cut, if it's the most common type that I'm going to use, I also create one for my small text and I create something for my big text as well, although you don't see that here. And mm -hmm. then... I sometimes like, for instance, your headers, you know, if you sometimes I do like a um, a hero section. So my headers are going to be bigger than 56 pixels or, you know, whatever. Um, so I usually create a special, um, I call it a header, um, big header or something like that. So I make the, the custom CSS for that. So that way I use a base I can use it all the time and set it up cool but now that L Elementor has gone and spoiled my <laughs> so what's Elementor gonna do with that what are they what are they playing I will show you I'm sorry I just stopped sharing but I'll show you where you can find this in Elementor now you're not going to understand it unless you have used the type scale before but Let's just go into one of our pages. Where's my, um, yeah, let's go into my style guide. I try to create a style guide, which is really good. I don't know if you guys do this, but it's a really good experimental page. A lot of times, most people create their style guide in a, um, in um, like Figma or you know Adobe XD or whatever. But sometimes I like to pull mine into the so that when I'm working, I have them right there. <laughs> I can see them. So in your site settings, and if you go to your typography, you know that um, you can you can set your typography, um, you know, size based on you know your desktop, tablet, mobile. But now you see there's a pencil over here. 
Well, that's because I had I ch I checked that. But you have your pixels, your M's, your rim. Now you also have your viewport width, and the pencil here is your custom. So now what I would do now that I would take my custom clamp here. And I would just paste it in here. So now it's going to resize. And the way that you read this, this is this is my largest screen. This is my middle screen. And this is my smallest. Uh, sorry, that was my middle. This is my smallest screen. Right. So this is how my H1 is going to appear in um, all my all my screens. So you're covering everything at the same time. You yeah. don't have to go into each each setting. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. It, um, Is that an add-in for WordPress or where did you get that, Sharon? No, that's Elementor. Um, so Elementor just released that. And I don't think it's, you know, a lot of people understand what clamp is or use fluid typography. So unless you've used fluid typography and have used clamp before in setting up your and I think you know we're all or we all a lot of uh, users of Elementor are used to using the site settings and that you know you're you're setting everything individually. Whereas with me, I use a style sheet. I basically use a style sheet, but there's a trick to learning how to use the style sheet with um, pulling the um, it's called an element kit. So when you're using these site settings, it's basically creating an element kit. So every time you create a WordPress website with Elementor, Elementor creates this element kit and it assigns a number to it. So once you know that, you can use that in your style sheet and set all of this up in your style sheet without ever touching this. Yeah. Are you doing that in your presentation, in your workshop? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Oh, not my workshop in the pre in the in the Elementor Central next meeting. That's Monday. Yeah, Is it Monday. Okay, February sixth. Okay. How do you how do you uh, where's what's Elementor Central? So where? okay, so Carrie, y'all haven't explained the new set. <laughs> so Elementor recently uh, went back to Meetup, as you know. Okay, so we're back on Meetup. <laughs> Well, instead of us being divided up into cities now, we are divided up into regions. Yeah. So here you guys are in what's Elementor Eastern? Eastern. 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 I'm in Elementor Central. So we've combined with the Chicago group and Dallas group. So basically anybody that's in that central area. And then there's an Elementor, I think it's called Midwestern, and then Elementor Pacific. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mountain in Pacific. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I in oh, sorry, Gary. people's time. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I want to try to end on a timely, I mean, this is fascinating, but, um, and I'm glad we got on the clamp thing because I, I learned something. But um, it's, I think it's about time for us to, wrap up unless anybody has a final question that they really got to have an answer to. Or at least to stop recording. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just stop recording, is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway.